Please remember to take a second and like and subscribe to Ask the Car Experts YouTube channel. Let's get into this. Next, I'm gonna replace the two idler pulleys. Here's the part number for one of them and part number for the other one. This idler pulley is the 720. The 720 is the upper one and the bottom one down there should be the 130. To take these off, you're gonna need a 90 degree pick and you need to take off this cover right here. And just gently pry it out just like so which pops off the little dust cover. You have to reinstall this to protect the integral bearing. And you're just gonna loosen it with a T47. Taking a quick look, it looks like that they updated this. You can see right here, it has a bolt that comes with it, um, but the seal looks a lot better on the new part versus the old one where it just had this plastic retainer. This looks like it's sealed a lot better with this metal cap. So this one's gonna be a little bit different to put on just because this center screw doesn't come out. So if you just grab the back side of it, you can actually catch the threads and start it correctly so you don't cross thread it. And we're gonna to torque this down absolutely to the correct torque spec. And the torque spec on this is 38 newton meters. And then you just have to simply lock this cap back on, just like that. Now the bottom one is the 130 number. It looks like this, it's a little bit bigger, it has this metal plate on the back. And same thing, we have to pop that front cap off and I think it's gonna be the same size Torx. And that bottom one is a T47. And I'm just gonna back this out. You remember, this is the one that was making the bearing noise for this particular vehicle and may have been the reason for the belt failure. Or the tensioner itself sometimes just gets weak and makes the uh, belt come off or the belt fails. So this is it right here. There's that plate, but I don't need to worry about that because it comes with everything you need when you buy it from BMW. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that one started and we're gonna to torque that one down. And this one actually looks about the same. I don't really see a change. You can see the oil on this. It was an oil leak from the oil filter housing. Now when that gets onto your belt, the belt does deteriorate and that can also be a reason why the belt will fail. So you don't have a lot of space on this one. So if you take and actually walk the bolt out because this plate is really what's holding that in place. Just walk that out. That's gonna give you more room to get in here, down here, around the lines that are in your way. And then you can go ahead and start that without cross-threading it. Now that I have that started, I can go ahead and snug that down. This also is torqued to 38 meters. And once that's torqued down, don't forget to put the cap on. So much better. The next component is the belt tensioner, part number 11288604266. And I always like to replace the bolt when I do a belt tensioner. Let me just talk real quick about the tensioner. It comes with this pin, which you have to pull out. It's actually holding it in the tensioned or rather untensioned position, which gives you the ability to put the belt on easier and then you remove the pin. You can install this incorrectly because if you look at the belt tensioner, which is facing like this angle right here, that is in the fully released position while this is in the locked in the installation position. So if you try to match this up and I installed this in the same position because that's the way it came out, this is a locating tab. You're actually going to damage something. So it's not going to look the same when you go back in with this one because it is set in the installation position. So make sure to keep that in mind when you take this one apart and you put this one in, it doesn't look the same. So we're going to take a look and I'll show you what I mean when I get this apart. And this right here is a T60. The T60 is to release the tension if you have a, if you're removing and installing a belt, you would then use a T60 in the tensioner 
right here. And you got to be careful because you can strip that out too, and then you, you'll have to replace the tensioner. And this bolt for the tensioner is an E12. Alright, I have that free. Back my bolt out and feed out the tensioner. Now if you look at the tensioner, if I line them up, the front would look the same, but you see back here, this tab is in a different location. See that right there? That one straight up versus this one, it's pointing down. So that's where you can make the mistake because this is your locator, you have to put that into the right location. If you don't do that and you try to tighten it up, you'll actually damage the tensioner and hopefully not the block. So when I go to put this in, we have that locator pointed towards the bottom. I need to make sure it's in right. So if I turn it this way, it's gonna float. If I keep turning it, it's gonna drop in just like this right here. There it is right there. If I don't have it in right and I tightened it in that incorrect position, which it was like here, you're gonna damage something. Keep rotating it until it drops in and then tighten it up. And you can see it's actually pointing towards the passenger side instead of pointing towards the driver's side because it's in the installation position. And the torque spec on this is also 38 Newton meters. Now it's time to put the vibration dampener on. I do like to use new hardware for this as well. The torque spec on this is going to be 35 Newton meters but there's a torque procedure, so it should be one, two, and then from there you're gonna do three, four, and then five, six, and then seven, eight, when you torque this down. All right, so the vibration dampener is on. It's a little bit of a juggling act to put it and hold it in place, and at the same time, you have to blindly, because you can't really see, find one of these screw holes and once you get one started then you can go ahead and hand tighten all the rest. Now these you tighten to 35 newton meters. Remember the top one first. All right everyone that's done. Now it's time for the belt which I'm going to take a short break here. I'm going to clean off some more of this oil that I can see or some residual over here. Let that dry out and then uh, throw the belt on probably tomorrow. You know, I was going to do the belt tomorrow, this shiny, beautiful new belt, but I remembered that I borrowed my friend's snap-on tool, and that this, is, this tool is actually specifically made for the um, N55 and the N54. And you can see it's got this angle over here. This is a snap-on tool, uh, SBT60, and if you have one of these cars, this is a great tool to have because it fits in here and gets right to the tensioner. There we go. Okay. Because it gives you a lot of leverage. This angle helps you get in there when even sometimes you have the fan on, actually. You can see I have a nice direct bite into the tensioner right there for when I have to wiggle the pin free, which I have to actually grab with a pair of pliers and wiggle that out to release the tension once I put the belt on. Now the belt routing, because it's going to be hard to see, and I have a picture here, and you can see here's the tensioner, right? Comes up this way, here's the alternator. This is the backward seat that you usually see on a BMW right there. There's the idler we replaced, right? Goes around the compressor, and then down to the power steering pump right here, and then the other idler, and then here's our vibration dampener right there. All right, there she is. So I'm around the crank and then by the tensioner up around the alternator, back down to the pulley, around the compressor, down to the power steering pump, over the top of the pulley and then back to the vibration dampener. And when you have this pin in, and if you save this pin, you can actually reuse it and put the tensioner back into this installation position, the belt goes on no problem and you're not fighting it. So now I'm gonna use that tool to release some of the tension and remove that pin. 
take some side cutters and hold it and then just take a pry bar and just pry slightly out and you can walk that by putting a little bit of pressure right at the tensioner and a little bit of wiggle and there we go right there it's so now I got the pin out I have this here still set up in case I need to adjust the belt, but it looks good. It looks all tension, so I'm going to pop this off and double check everything. Run your hand along it. Make sure that, yeah, that's really good tension. And I made sure that, and I made sure I was on the ribs correctly on the vibration dampener and all of the other components. So the belt is on. I'm about ready to throw the fan on. Now I still have to do the oil priming procedure because I did interrupt the oil circuit when I replaced the volume control valve and I did an oil filter housing and I'm going to show you how to do that in a separate video. And save this pin. You never know if you're going to need it again to just put the tensioner back in installation position and then it makes it super easy to install the belt.